Again, thank you everyone for joining. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the Industry Safe 5.9 update. Uh, first, we're going to give you an introduction uh, to just who's on the phone. Um, I'm going to take you through a PowerPoint that's going to um, really just highlight a high level what each of the 5.9 updates are. And then I'm going to turn it over to Gabe, and Gabe's actually going to walk uh, you through uh, the software and each of the updates within the software. Um, so uh, everyone at this point, uh, this, there might be one or two exceptions, but almost everyone should have received uh, the 5.9 update, and your site will be updated. Um, the way you know is if you're an administrator, you will have got an email notification or several email notifications from us. And if you're an end user, when you log into the site, uh, you will see a pop-up um, window that will let you know uh, that the 5.9 update has been applied as well as uh, direct you to uh, some releases. And if you're a beta client, you've uh, been using the 5.9 update uh, for a month or so. On the phone up, on the phone with us today um, is myself, uh, Claire Epstein, and instead of Josh, we actually have uh, Gabe Tompkins. I work very closely on uh, working with our clients on the industry safe software, and then Gabe Tompkins is on the phone with us as our senior product manager. He's very involved in the product development and product strategy of industry safe and has worked uh, closely with numerous clients over the year in implementing uh, the software. Uh, so the first change um, that you will see um, in the 5.9 update are modifications uh, to the form ed editor. Uh, every update, we have been uh, modifying uh, the form editor, and that's the area you see in system functions if you're a system administrator that allows you to make changes to the industry safe uh, forms. Um, we have now uh, completed inspections, observations, and JSA now all have the form editor. Uh, previously, we had completed incidents and corrective actions and hazards. Uh, so now you have inspections, observations, and JSA uh, added to the mix. I'm just going to give folks a quick refresher on what you can do with the form editor. If you've used the form editor for the other modules, uh, then this won't be new to you, but if you haven't or if you really were waiting to use it for inspections or observations or JSA, um, it's good to know. Um, so what the form editor does is it allows you to make modifications uh, to forms in industry safe, um, and it is composed of different um, elements that allows you to make the modifications, uh, publish the changes, and also change uh, the layout. Um, so what you can do with the form editor, and this is different than our old uh, edit forms, is that um, you actually uh, make changes to the form, but they don't get published right away. You actually hit that um, publish button, and that's when the, the edits to the form will get rolled out uh, to your users. There's also an undo and redo and the ability to see a published history. Um, also in the form editor, you'll see a field and features panel. This is it allows you to see what fields are available. You can add new fields. Um, and you can turn on and off features. Um, and this itself is the form layout where it is actually giving you a rough approximation of what the form looks like, and you can move uh, fields throughout uh, different sections of the form. Uh, with the form layout, you now have available to you uh, in the inspections, um, observation and JSA modules features you didn't have previously. Uh, so now you can edit the actual name of sections before you could not do that. And you can also edit the form titles as well. Uh, you now also, for every uh, field um, in the form editor, you now have the ability to add a tooltip, which means that you can hover over a field and your end users will see a tooltip. You now have that available to you. Um, and you now have some new form editor types available uh, for inspections, observation, and JSA. You have the ability to add an employee search field, a hyperlink field, and a note field. Uh, so those are all new to those modules. Okay, so that's the, the form editor. Um, the next change that we made is in uh, the dashboard update. And uh, there's actually a bunch of uh, changes. The dashboard you're going to see, it's going to have a, an updated look and feel. It's just going to look a, a little bit differently. Um, the colors um, are going to be um, are going to be bold. Uh, just uh, they're just going to look. It's just going to be a, a little fresher. 
Um, you'll also see that instead of having, um, there used to be this block called an advanced filter um, that would be within the dashboard now, and then you would have your hierarchy above the dashboard. Now everything is in uh, one place, so you just just click the display filter and you will see all of your filters uh, in one place, so you don't have to have them in two different places. And then the other thing that's really nice is that all of the drop-down filters um, in that filter box are multi-select. Uh, so before, if you wanted to look at uh, two out of three regions, you really would have to run them separately. It was very hard to look at them together. Now, uh, for example, you can pick a business group and then you can pick a couple regions um, in the business group. So again, it is it is on multi-select and it'll give you a lot more flexibility. Um, the next piece that we updated are the analysis grid logs. Uh, there are some updates uh, that everyone has, and then there's just a couple more tweaks to those updates that are going to come out in the next couple days. So you will see um, some more improvements to the grid logs as well that might not currently be on your site. Uh, but what you will see is you'll see an improved formatting and organization. You'll see uh, the suggested charts and graphs feature, and you'll have the ability to do comparisons. Uh, what you'll be getting in the, what you'll also get in addition is the addition now to schedule any any analysis logs. So just uh, for folks to refresh their memory, the analysis logs are in the reports and analysis section of Industry Safe. Um, every module has at least one analysis log, and some modules have multiple analysis logs. For example, the incident module has uh, three or four. Uh, what you'll see when you go on to an analysis log is you'll see um, improved organization. Uh, there's, it's a little bit cleaner to look at. Um, they've moved some um, functions uh, to the top above the table, and then you click on the table and you'll see all the, all the other features. They've also made it um, a lot easier when you click on a column. You'll receive a lot of options uh, for that column. Um, what you'll also have is the ability uh, for suggested uh, charts. So if you click on any field in the any field in your analysis grid, um, if you right click on it, you'll see a menu, and this is this is the menu you'll see here. But what you'll also see is this um, add chart feature. And when you click that add chart, the uh, software will actually generate a suggested chart for you. Now some of the suggested charts might not be all that useful, but some of them are. So it's a really nice feature. Um, it just tries to look at what data uh, you think will be useful. And there's also the ability to, to do comparisons. Uh, you can now uh, slice and dice uh, your data in uh, different ways. When you go to hit, for example, the bar, it's going to then actually um, ask if you want to do a compare column. Uh, so it gives you a lot more flexibility in looking at certain types of data. We also um, have always uh, done minor customer requests and fixes in our releases, we just haven't done a good job of documenting them before, but now um, if you go to our release notes, you'll actually see there's a whole list of minor issues that are also included in the 5.9 patch, um, so that's also sometimes worth it uh, to take a look at uh, when you're looking through the release, through the release notes. Um, so if there, are no, um, if there are no questions, um, or no questions that I think I can answer for the group, I am going to uh, turn it over to Gabe, who's actually going to walk us through uh, what those updates look like um, in, in our demo site. Okay, I'm just going to take you into our demo site. Um, and so in here, if you've got your own industry safe site, you will see um, some differences, but, but most of the features I'm going to show you today, everyone should have access to. Um, so the first thing we'll talk about is the form editor. Um, and again, that's always uh, for, you know, been available for hazards and corrective actions for a while. Uh, and then earlier this year, we added it to incidents. Uh, and now we're rolling it out to our observations, inspections, and uh, JSA modules. Uh, some of you, once you've gone in and actually configured it, um, one of the things you'll notice is the ability to, to organize column, um, fields into two columns, just presents it in a little bit better of a layout. And then in the checklist, you can actually move uh, items around, so that's another, another new feature there. To actually make those changes, you're going to go into the system functions module, under setup, edit forms, 
And now once you navigate to one of those modules, we'll just choose inspections and pick a section, the, the new form editor is going to load. So here you'll see a, a layout that's, that's similar to how the form is going to look. Um, on the left hand side here, we've got our, our fields and, and features that you can add to the form or, or turn on and off. So you can turn on and off additional features, adding corrective actions, things like that, the close section. Uh, and then you can search for fields in here uh, that aren't on the form or, or see which ones, all these ones in gray are already on the form. And then to add a field to the, the form, you just drag that into the section you want and let it go and it's going to add that. Um, at the top, we have our publish elements. <clears throat> so these are going to be the ability, once you've, as you go along and make changes to the form, they're automatically going to be saved. You may have noticed that the last saved updated when I added that field. Um, so you can see here, it's just saving as I go on. And then once I'm done and I, I have a form that I like and I want to actually push that out to my end users, then you're going to click this publish button and it's actually going to publish the form and, and update the actual recording form within that module to match the layout here. Uh, you also have your undo and redo features here. You can see a publish history of everyone who's ever published the form. Uh, and then there's also a print preview if you want something that's a little bit closer to uh, what the real form will look like. That will give you a PDF to do that. Um, within the main layout panel here, there's a couple of different features here. Um, you now have the ability to change recording form titles. So if you, instead of inspection form, you want to call it audit form, you could do that. You can change section headings instead of basic information. You call it general or, or whatever you'd like there. Um, you can actually add new sections now. So we have this new section link here we could drag in to, to add it. Same thing, when we go to add a new field, we get some new options here. So we can add an employee search field, a hyperlink, which is really just a, a link to maybe some additional documentation you want to provide to your end users or a, a user guide or something like that. And then a note field, which is just uh, some static text that will appear on the form, uh, maybe some instructions for users on how to fill out a particular field or something like that. Uh, you can also modify field properties. So if we just take a look at this department field here. Um, you can always change the field label, label like you always could. Um, you can configure advanced settings now for any of our forms, the form editor. So you could pick a field, say this department. I only want it to show up for a specific uh, section. So I could check off the, the section that has to be selected in order for the department field to be displayed. Uh, I can change whether or not it's required. And then I can also edit the list of drop-down values like I could before. Um, any questions so far on the form editor? Okay. Um, all right, then um, I was going to move on next to the dashboard and talk about, um, so, oh, sorry, one other thing here is the, uh, the checklist section, uh, which is new because these are the first set of forms we have with, uh, with checklists that we've added to the form editor. So what you can do now is actually move fields around um, and our columns around. So it allows you to reorder the columns within the form as opposed to before where you could just turn a column on or off. Now you can actually choose the position of it. Um, you can also modify the drop-down values like you could before. Okay. So next is our dashboard. We've updated the filters there to be very, very uh, similar to what you're going to see in, in all of our summary screens. And uh, so it's a little bit more of a consistent look and feel. Um, the, uh, the panel for advanced filters and, and the date range is now gone. Uh, and all that has been moved up to this filters panel at the top. So now when you click display filters, you'll get this panel here where you can filter by, you know, any of your, your hierarchy layers, your um, departments, sections, locations, whatever you call those, uh, worker type, supervisor. It's got a date range in here. The, the, the helper icon works a lot better than it did before. And then you've got some options here. So you can, once you've set your filters, you can apply them and, and update your dashboard. You can save them, which will actually apply them, and then also save it. So every time you come back, it's going to use those same filters. And then you can reset your filters to clear those out and go back to the default, which is the, the year to date. Some other new options for our filters here. Um, so you can click the drop down and select an item like you could before, but now you can actually select multiple values. So uh, you could select two or three. You can also just start typing and select a value that matches. And you can also just leave in a partial match. So if you, um, you know, instead of facility, you call them 
uh, projects, you know, project number in there, you could just type in a, a project number and filter for that. Um, so those are all new ways to filter the dashboard. Uh, and then once you've actually filtered it, and we'll just choose a couple in here, and say we want to look just uh, for the first six months of this year. And we're just going to apply our filters. Uh, now it'll actually tell me what my filters are um, and update all the data to match. And you can see here I've selected something that doesn't have any anything any records, but um, it'll tell me that. Uh, and if I were to, to leave and come back, those would go away and go back to the default. I go back to my dashboard. Okay. Any questions about the dashboard? Okay. And the last piece that we'll talk about are the log reports. Um, so this is, everything I'll show you applies to all the different log reports. I'm just going to pick on uh, a couple here to show you uh, all the new features that are available. And I'll just choose the, uh, the vehicle incidents log. Um, so the first thing you'll notice when you go to any of our log reports is the updated style. Um, it's a little bit clearer, cleaner, slightly more modern look. We, the features have been reorganized a little bit to hopefully make it a little bit more intuitive to use. Um, you will notice now the new formula, filter, chart, and cross-tab options at the top. Um, for items that are specific to a table, they've been moved down here under this gear icon. So if you want to hide or add columns, you can click that that gear icon that will allow you to, to change those things. You can also, as before, change the sorting, grouping, add aggregates, add paging, things like that. Um, the icon to add it to the dashboard has been changed, but that's there. Uh, and now, within the chart itself, you can actually go in and click on a column heading, and you can choose to sort it that way. Uh, filter records, group them, add aggregates. Uh, and then a nice one here that, that a lot of people like is the ability to add a chart and also change the format. So if there's a, you want to change the formatting of a specific column, um, you know, left align, right align, you know, change the date formatting, um, all that you can do. Uh, but the nice one with the add chart, um, so you know you know you want a, a chart by incident type or say uh, vehicle type. Let's go with incident type. It's going to automatically guess at a chart that, that it thinks you want to see. So here we've got our incidents by incident type. Uh, and then some other new features that you'll see here. Um, we can actually add a comparison. So if we wanted to see vehicle type overlaid on top of that. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do that. Um, so you can see our, our different vehicle types. Uh, and then you can choose how the, the bars are oriented. So right now we're looking at it at vertical uh, or horizontal. Now you can change that to vertical. And instead of the different vehicle types being stacked on top of one another, you can choose to have them side by side. Oops, sorry, let's a little bit. So now instead of stacked, you want them side by side. You can do it that way. So here we can see the different uh, vehicle types by, or incident types by vehicle type. Um, and then there's a lot of different options in here uh, in terms of showing values and things like that as well. You can also choose, and if you're not going to use the, the comparisons, you can look at, at uh, you know, maybe just your top 10 or something like that. So if you wanted to look at, order them by their rank, and you can see just your top five or, you know, 10 or how many ever values you had. Any questions on the, the dashboard or the log report updates? Another new feature here um, that's available now to all the log reports is the scheduler. So previously those were only available in certain uh, log reports in each module now. And all of our log reports have the scheduler feature. So once you've actually saved a log report, um, and you could do it from a shared one or, or one of your private ones, you can click this Add Edit Schedule button and then choose your, your frequency so you want it sent out uh, you know, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever. You can select uh, recipients for the report. And again, we have a little wizard here that you can use to search for people. Um, and then once you've set that up, here, let's uh, choose someone. 
So I'm just going to send it to me. You go back. We're going to set it up to go out. Um, you know, we could set it up weekly, and you could choose the day of the week. Um, you could choose it monthly and say it's the you know first day of the month or, or just specific months. And we're just going to go with with once. and I'm going to save this schedule and then it'll let me know that I've scheduled that report um, for one recipient uh, any questions on any of these updates um, some of the other things you'll notice people had complained about in the past a bug we fixed is these export buttons are now fixed they're not continually jumping off to the right hand side that was uh, uh, you know an issue obviously we got some complaints about so that has been fixed along with a couple other minor things within the the log reports but uh, those are all of our updates again you, you should have gotten a, a notice when your site was updated and if you want to see all these release notes and, and get the PowerPoint that Claire went through you can always go to system functions and click on this link for the latest release notes um, that'll go over everything we talked about today it's got links to the the webinars you can also use this link here to view a recording of this webinar um, and then there's also the, the PowerPoint that we went through as well. Um, again, this is our, our support portal, so if there's anything else you need help with, you can search for that. Uh, and please don't hesitate to contact us if there's other features you'd like to see added to Industry Safe or have any comments or feedback on, on what we've done with the software. So with that, I'm just going to turn it back over to Claire for a final wrap-up. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I did also want to make a plug um, if you have not done it already, we do have a customer survey um, out there uh, for folks who want to um, haven't answered the survey yet. There is multiple ways to get a link, but there is a link on our homepage of our website um, where it says at, right at the bottom here, complete our annual customer survey. That is another great way for us to get feedback. Uh, from from our customers on what is working and what is not working. Uh, so I really encourage uh, folks um, who haven't completed yet, completed yet to fill it out. And for those who have, uh, we thank you. And again, if we can be of any more assistance, uh, just let us know. Uh, thank you uh, so much, everyone, uh, for attending. This concludes our webinar.